Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, as we would all know, the changes of flasks can either be construed as good or bad. But there was one thing that I've been sort of doing with my flask that I noticed is actually quite fun and actually makes the game a lot easier to play, is setting up your flask to automatically proc off of different sort of ailments and effects. The example I've got here is my Quicksilver flask and my Granite flask. So, looking at these, this is the use of the new orbs, which are the, uh, the Enkindling and the Instilling orb. So, using Instilling orbs, what I've actually done is now you can craft a, a, a trigger element and basically have auto-triggering flasks. Um, so, what I've done, for example, with my Quicksilver flask, as soon as you hit full charges, your Quicksilver flask drops. Basically what it means is you can move your flask down and have, instead of using five buttons on your flask, only use three, three buttons in this case, because my Quicksilver flask then triggers movement speed, um, as it would, when it, when it hits full charges. So as you're mapping, you just basically run around, hit full charges on your flask, bang, it automatically triggers, and you don't have to hit that flask at all, except for the first time that you actually hit that flask when you start the map. The next flask I got, which is one that's really important for anyone who's, you know, going into the end game, used when you become chill. And then you basically want to get whatever flask you want to use, um, alteration orbit until it has grants immunity to chill for four seconds when chilled and freeze for frozen. So, you know, basically as soon as you become chilled, this flask automatically triggers and then bang, you're able to deal with that, uh, that freeze, and, uh, freeze and chill effect pretty efficiently. Now, I can't, don't have it for my flask of staunching because you can't do it on life-based flask from what I can see. Oh, that'd be too powerful according to GGG because if you were able to auto-trigger flask then on life flask, then you'd never die. Um, the other thing is also using your instilling orbs if you are running melee-based characters or totem characters, Make sure with your Lion's Raw, you run an instilling flask and you get this 42% increased effect. While they did nerf the flask, this does buff that flask up again. Just some really basic quality of life things to keep in mind when you're playing the game. I thought I'd do like a quick two, two and a half minute video just to bring that to everyone's attention in case they weren't aware that you could do that. And there's some pretty cool crafting uh, possibilities that with different flasks that you can do, that you can basically craft here. So I could also run, you know, an onslaught flask. There's also a flask effect where you can have it where adjacent flask, so the flask near it will trigger when you hit that adjacent flask. So then you can trigger two flasks at once. Technically, you could have that map to have that on like your button five and then have every other flask trigger at all the same time. So you could trigger all your flasks at once, um, which is another thing that you could do with different builds. Anyway, I uh, thought I'd sort of flag it, you know, now we're aware of it. And uh, it's, it's actually quite a good quality of, uh, quality of life change that I am pretty happy about, about flasking. Be it that, you know, there is a lot of bullshit with corrupted blood now and, and the flasks that you do run just aren't enough to deal with it. Anyway, uh, like and sub. And uh, until next time, have a good one and uh, bye.